Hi everyone, this is Trisha, and I'm back again today with another watercolor project for you. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this really cool hanging spring basket. It's a very versatile project and it only takes a few minutes to complete. So if you wanted to, you could change the colors of the flowers, change the sentiment, and you could really use this for any occasion you might need. So let me show you how to take how to do this project. So first I'm taking one of the branches from the new branches set and I'm just stamping it in some sepia a couple of times. I'm going to take my, my brush and just soften some of those lines. Generally when you use the branches set you don't even have to do this step. This is just something that I wanted to do. I wanted to give the, the tree branch just a little more depth so that it looks like it can hold this this huge basket of flowers. Like I said, I just pulled a little bit of the color out of the line. Now I'm taking this little pot from the Southwest set and I'm inking up just the very bottom with some African violet because I want this basket to look like it's white. So I'm going to come down towards the bottom of the page so that it's going to give me plenty of room for all of my blooms. So now I'm just quickly just taking some of that color out of the lines and I'm just really staying towards the left and right because this pot is round so you want that you want your color to be darker on the edges and then come into a light to the light in in the middle so now this is the daisy bunch which comes with the original flower set this is a great stamp because you can if you stamp it in a circular circular motion you're going to get a really nice tight bloom. But what you can also do with this is create a bunch of these little flowers like they were in, in a bouquet like this. So instead of going in a circular motion, I'm just really jumping it around here and there. Because I don't want it to be a tight bloom, I want it to look like a bunch of little flowers. And what what the Stamping it more than once will do is those dark flowers will appear like they're in the front of the bouquet and those light ones will just go into the background and it will really give your give your project some 3D dimension. Now I'm coming in here and I'm not using a lot. I know you can see the water droplets, but I'm really using a very little bit of water on these blooms and I'm kind of jumping it around the stamp so these daisy bunches have like a a hole in the middle or an area where there's no stamp so it looks like it's a, a flower so I'm just kind of going around trying to maintain that little hole so that it really makes it gives you the look of the flower itself I'm trying to maintain the integrity of that stamp because I do want these to look like flowers and as usual, I'm when I do my when I do certain flowers, I will start at the the lightest flower and work my way to the darkest flower. That way if I don't get too much color on my brush and then make my my light flowers really dark. Cuz I like to maintain that like light the like ugh, the like the light and the darkness. So I'm just, as you see, I left a lot of white space. I want to be able to put this little, so I'm using this little leaf from the new foliage set. And I'm going to ink it up with some pine green. So I wanted to leave some areas for my foliage. I didn't put a, a, a ton in. I just wanted the hint of the idea of some greens in here. So as usual, you want to make sure you're leaving some white space so that you get some really good dimension and then leaving enough room for your foliage. I usually start with my flowers because if I don't, I tend to get carried away with my, with my foliage and then I don't have any room for my flowers. So this way I can just leave a few areas and then just stick some leaves in there. So it makes it really look like a flower basket full of plants because this is really like a little plant bush so I'm going to continue to just and I'm just stamping it a couple times and then re-inking it it's a very small stamp 
So I just like to get a little bit of variation in there. And just give the give the idea that there's some greens in this in this basket full of pansies or whatever you want to whatever flower you want to create. And then I'm just going to come in here and with just a very little bit of water, I'm just going to soften out those lines. And as you can see, we're we're almost done. This this project comes together very very quickly. And it's a great addition to any card that you might need at that point at this point. I like to not stamp some sentiment, not stamp sentiments on my cards when I create a project. I usually put them aside, create the card, and then when I need a card, I just stamp the sentiment at that point. Because they're all so versatile, most of them can be used for any occasion. And this one was really fun to do because it's so cold here still and spring is just not wanting to come out. So it made me feel like spring was in my craft room at least. <laughs> so now this is the fur, the fur tree set. And I'm just using that one small topper from the fur. It's a fur tree branch or free fur tree topper? Fur tree topper, yeah. And then I'm just inking it up with the pine green and stamping it a few times just to put it on those branches so they I know the branch kind of looks like it's hanging in midair but that's so that you can use your imagination on where this tree might be or where this little ba basket might be hanging so I've stamped out those little branches the pine branches pine leaves and now I'm just adding some some water to them you don't want to add too much water because you don't want it to really drown out the color and those and and those lines you just want to soften them up so that they pop a little bit So now I'm going to come in here with my sepia marker and I'm just going to draw in a couple of lines and I'm using the fine tip and I'm just going to draw in the two strings that are holding the basket. So I'm going to come kind of close. I want to make sure that I'm not going too far that it doesn't look like it's attached to that basket. So you kind of want to use that as a guideline as to where the basket where those two lines would be, but they're really just lines. And then I just softened them out so that they had a little bit of depth to them. Now I'm adding some manganese blue to my palette because I always like to add a little bit of sky behind my, behind my projects. It gives it a little more depth and a little more personality. And if you've seen any of my videos, you see that I put in my skies, I just jump my brush around, and then I add some water to soften out the hard edges, use my paper towel to pick stuff up, and then add more color. And it's really fun. It's not something that's very, it's not hard to do. And I try to stay away from the rest of the painting. I'm just putting this in the background. I don't need to go around every little part I'm just putting some cute little clouds in the back. Now you could stop right there. I always just, I like to do a little bit more. So I'm just adding a little bit more color to the tops of those clouds. So it really reinforces that. Then I'm just gonna come in and sign and date it. And that's our project for today. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope that you enjoyed this project and I can't wait to see what you come up with. Share your projects on Instagram with the hashtag AI watercolor. I'd love to see what you come up with and thank you so much for come joining me again today and I hope to see you on the next video. Bye.